For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to format a data series and a data point on a chart. So, first what you need to do is have a chart made, and then go ahead and select that chart. Over one of the columns, click it once, then right click, select Format Data Series, and the Format Data Series window will open. Now the first tab that opens up is usually the Patterns tab. What you have here is you have a border box on the left. Now that allows you to change how the border of the column looks and an area box on the right, which allows you to change the background of the column. Now, when you select one of these columns, you're actually selecting the data series. So we've selected all of the purple columns, all the columns for the widget B. So if I change one of these, it's gonna change all of them. I'll give you an example. Let's put a custom border I'm going to go to the color and select red. The style, I will make a dashed line. And the weight, the weight is actually the width. I'll make it a wider. And for the area, I'm going to make it a black background. And then select OK. Now you notice that all of the columns for the that used to be for that used to be purple and that are for widget B are now black backgrounds with a red dashed line for a border. Also, the legend does update accordingly. So let's right click Format Data Series. Now I'm just going to make the columns white. And on border, I'm going to click Automatic to make it a simple black line. The other thing to notice is there is a Fill Effects button here. So once you click Fill Effects, another window will open up that allows you to change how the background of the column is going to look. There's a gradient tab which allows you to make one color fading into another color and for instance let's go ahead and click red you can make it lighter or darker or also if you select two colors you can select the color that red will transition into say black now once you've got two colors you like go to the shading styles box and select how you want the gradient to be if you want it to be horizontal vertical diagonal up or diagonal down, etc. Now once you have the style you like, go to the variance box and select the variation of that style that suits your needs. The sample box over here will show you exactly how it's going to look. So if I select OK, you will see now that the widget B columns have a gradient from red to black. Now I'm going to go back to format data series fill effects and I'm going to briefly touch on the texture and pattern tabs. The texture tab simply allows you to select any one of these textures and use it as a background for the column. It's pretty basic actually but you can select other texture and get a picture from your hard drive if you'd like. The pattern tab allows you to select two colors for a foreground and a background <coughs> say white and red and you can choose one of these patterns, say diagonal brick. Now the picture tab is probably the most interesting. You can select a picture from your computer. So, and um, <coughs> in the format box you can select if you'd like it to be stretched, stacked, or scaled. So we're just going to leave it as is and click OK. And you see now that the picture is the background of each of the widget B columns. Now that was a pretty quick overview of fill effects. Most of that is self-explanatory. But if you'd like to take off the background effect, like take off the picture, you can either in the area box select none or choose a color for the background, say white. Now I do want a border, so I'm going to click automatic. So we'll go to a regular black line and move on to the axis tab. The axis tab will allow you to add a secondary axis. Now what that means, once I've clicked that you'll see that there is a Y axis on the left and on the right. Now here on the right it corresponds to widget B and the left axis corresponds to widget A. So it is a little bit confusing because here it goes 0 to 5 and on the right side 11 to 14.5 so it's usually best to leave that at primary axis. I'm going to skip Y error bars for now and move on to data labels. 
Data Labels allows you to add a series name, a category name, or a value to the top of a column. Now this can help you to see the value of a column or what it's referring to sometimes. For instance, I'll add a value, click OK, and now you will see above each one of the columns there's a value. This is useful in this case because I don't have grid lines, so I'm not sure if this is 12 or this is 13. I don't know, but here now I can see the values. I go ahead and right click Format Data Series again. The series and the category name, if you check those, what it's going to do is right where it put the value, it'll also include widget A and the corresponding date for that column. Once again, that can be useful, but it can also clutter your chart, so be careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and take value off and move on to the series order tab. What this will allow you to do is choose what data series you want to be represented first. For instance, if I click widget B and click move up, you'll see that now the white columns are first on the left and then the blue columns on the right. If you have more than two data series, you can select whichever data series here you'd like and then click move up or move down to change its order. Now, moving to the Options tab, what you can do here is change the spacing between the columns and also determine the overlap. So for instance, I'll reduce the gap width to zero. What that's going to do, you'll see in the sample chart, is make it so that there's no spacing between the columns. So here we can see final effect. Also what you can do, I will put the gap width back at 100, is you can determine the overlap. Now for each date the columns are, <coughs> the columns touch, so there's no spacing between the columns within one date. But if I want to create spacing, I can go to the overlap and make it negative. And now you'll see for one date the columns are actually separated. Or I can make overlap a positive number and for that same date the columns will overlap. And you can see for the example of how the chart's going to look here. I'm going to leave the overlap at zero, just so it'll be back to where it was. And now move on to the Y error bars tab. Now what this will allow you to do is to sort of represent a deviation in what the values might actually be. I'm not going to go in too much depth here on it though, but uh, notice you can select a Y error bar that looks like this for both, plus, minus, or none. Also, in the error amount box, you select exactly how much you want the error to be. A fixed value, so any value you'd like. A percentage, in this case 5% means 5% of the height of the column will be used for the error bar, or standard deviation. In addition, you can create custom, which means you'll use a data cell within the worksheet that you have to represent the standard error or to represent the uh, error bar. Now I'll touch on this later in a different uh, tutorial where I go more in depth but that is pretty much how you can uh, change the data series. Now it's worth noting that this whole time all I changed was the widget B columns. The widget A columns remain exactly the same. In order to change those I have to click them, right click, format data series, and do everything that I did to the widget B columns. So that's worth noting. Also, if I want to change just one of these columns, say I want to make the one with the highest value stick out, what you can do is click it once, wait a second or two, then click it again, and now right click, format data point. And this is going to change only this column. It's not going to change any of the others in the widget B series. So you have a Patterns tab, a Data Labels tab, and an Options tab, which will do everything that they will do for the data series, but for only one column. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and make this column red. I want it to stand out a little bit. And I'm going to take the border off and click OK. So you'll see now that the column with the highest value is red. And that's how you can change a data point as opposed to the whole series. And there you go.